But before we do any stoichiometry with equations like that, hey, how about graphing this reaction? Well, we've done some graphs already, but here's the thing. When you take this reaction and you say, okay, I want to graphically represent it, it's an exothermic reaction, so the reactants are going to end up with more potential energy than the products do because energy is going to be released. Right. But here's the thing that you really need to understand and should be able to draw with these reactions. You know that you need to add energy to break down these things before energy is released when bonds form, right? So here's the deal. This represents the change in energy. You can do one arrow going from here to here, but basically the best way to draw that is to say, ah, first thing we're going to do is add energy. And we're going to add energy to make CH and O atoms out of all of these right here. We're going to add energy to break these apart into atoms. And then they are going to release energy to form that. And that's the best way to draw an exothermic reaction. We add energy. How much energy? A certain quantity of energy. And I'm not really even sure what this is necessarily here, and nor do I really care. Because here's the deal. All I know is that the change from here to here, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the delta H of negative 1428.4 kilojoules, right? That's the change in the energy right there. How much energy does it take to activate this reaction? That's called the activation energy. So this right here added here is the Ea. And the total amount of energy that would, would be required here in order to do this reaction is this much, but we lose it in order to then get the change in total energy, which is the delta H. Now, a lot of times you'll see these reactions not written beautifully like this, because that's really good. Because you know what? These are levels of energy. You know what? We don't really write time here, because we don't have a graph that really goes like this. And then we can say, well, you know, it, at time this, we could have this much energy right here involved in a reaction. Well, actually, that's not what happens. This is bond energy, man. We go from an energy content here, directly to here, directly to here. And we don't really have these things here all in a nice line together. These are transitions. So that's why I put the arrows here. Because there's quantity of energy being released in quanta, right? Not in, in just little streams of continuous flow of energy, which is what you would imply if you connected all these lines together. That would be wrong, but guess what? People do it anyway. So you're going to see graphs like this that are going to be drawn in this manner. And they're going to say, what does this represent right here? And you're going to say, that represents an exothermic reaction, where this is the activation energy. And this right here, always a difference from where you start to where you stop. That's what the delta H is right there. Hey, and if somebody says, I want that reaction to go faster, well, then you would add something called a catalyst to make it go faster. And by the way, what does a catalyst do? A catalyst lowers the activation energy for a reaction. So, if this is the reaction that represents what's happening here, or the, the path that this reaction has taken, a catalyst will lower the amount of activation energy, but you'll still always get the same delta H. The delta H will never change. But what did you do here? You lowered the activation energy, so that means that the reaction can occur quicker because you don't have to add as much energy to make the reaction happen. So, speed-wise, it just takes place a lot faster. But you never change the delta H. The catalyst, a catalyst will always lower activation energy to increase the rate of reaction, but does not change the delta H.